Hey guys, this is Ian Fairley, and welcome to another episode of my dinosaur series. Last time on the dinosaur series, we talked about the Triassic period and the three dinosaurs that lived there 250 million years ago. We also discussed how six and a half continents of the world formed into a big supercontinent known as Pangaea. At least that's what they once were. And it's about time I told you about the other two time periods of the Mesozoic Era, the Jurassic Period and the Cretaceous Period. During the Jurassic Period, 200 to 145 million years ago, Pangaea began to split into two different continents. These two continents are identified as Laurasia and Gondwana, and as herbivorous dinosaurs became bigger, so did the carnivorous dinosaurs. Luckily, Herbivorous dinosaurs of the Jurassic period, just like the ones in the Cretaceous period, when, which we are about to go next, have developed defense mechanisms against predators to keep them safe. It would help to have a herd too. It's kind of like saying buffaloes and rhinos were equipped with horns, but elephants are equipped with tusks. Still, that'd be a best defense against predatory animals like lions and leopards and hyenas too. However, dinosaurs without defense mechanisms may have been vulnerable to most predators and some of them needed to run for their lives while sticking to the herd. But at the beginning of the Cretaceous period, Laurasia and Guanduana split into several different continents of the world. After the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, this is where we are now. And did you know that the first flowering plants grew in the Cretaceous period? If you didn't, well, that's the interesting thing. Anyway, it's time that I talked about two different dinosaurs from two different time periods. Stegosaurus from the Jurassic period and Ankylosaurus from the Cretaceous period. Let's start with Stegosaurus, shall we? The dinosaur name Stegosaurus means roof lizard because of the 17 bony plates it had on its back. Not only were these plates used for intimidation displays against rivals or an attraction to females, but also to control its blood temperature as the Jurassic landscape gets very hot. The controlling of body temperature is known as metabolic heat production and it's common in mammals and birds, especially us humans since we humans are mammals. Reptiles, amphibians, and fishes might not have had the ability to do that since they were cold-blooded creatures. Though Stegosaurus might have looked like a big, strange reptile, it had a beak on the front of its mouth just like today's birds. But unlike birds, Stegosaurus had teeth at the back of its mouth for chewing vegetation whether it's on short trees or in the grass. The brain of the Stegosaurus was very small for its little head. It was about the size of a bent hot dog or a walnut. Stegosaurus might not have been the smartest dinosaur of its time, but it did have a useful defense mechanism against predators like Allosaurus, a dinosaur we will talk about more in the future. For example, these sharp spike thingies at the end of its tail known as Thagomizers. Stegosaurus might have swinged their tail against their opponents, injuring them with a devastating blow. Though Stegosaurus might not have been fully armored like its spike-tailed cousin, the Kentrosaurus. Kentrosaurus and most others like it had shoulder spikes on each shoulder, made for secondary defenses, just like their Thagomizers. In the year 1877, the discovery of Stegosaurus bones were located in the western parts of the USA, maybe even Colorado. The size of the Stegosaurus was about 30 feet long, 9 feet tall, and 6,800 pounds. That's about as big as a bus carrying the weight of a rhino. Stegosaurus was a plant-eating dinosaur that belonged to a group of dinosaurs known as the Stegosauridae, or spike-tailed dinosaurs. Now that I've covered just about everything about Stegosaurus, let's move on to the next dinosaur, shall we? The Ankylosaurus. The dinosaur name Ankylosaurus means fused lizard because of all the areas of fused bones in the skeleton. 
Ankylosaurus was equipped with a shielded armor on its back, kind of like an armadillo. It might have used that armor to protect its body from being bitten by carnivorous dinosaurs, like the famous Tyrannosaurus Rex. Ankylosaurus was also equipped with a giant club at the end of its tail, used for swinging at a force strong enough to shatter the bones of T-Rex and other predators. Ankylosaurus belonged to a group of species known as the Ankylosauridae, or clubbed-tailed dinosaurs. And speaking of skeletons, Ankylosaurus remains were discovered in Montana of the USA during the year of 1906, though there wasn't a complete skeleton of Ankylosaurus. The armor, tail, shoulder, ribs, and skull were the only remains that paleontologists found of this dinosaur. Complete species of club tail skeletons related to Ankylosaurus might have helped paleontologists determine what this dinosaur looked like back in its time. We can only be sure of that. Ankylosaurus had the length of 35 feet, a height of 10 feet, and a weight of 3.9 tons. That was about as big as an RV vehicle carrying the weight of a hippo. Ankylosaurus and other species like it have developed poor eyesight but a keen and sharp sense of smell. This might have benefited them when sensing danger, food, or water, and it's often common around modern day hedgehogs where they have poor eyesight but sharp smelling senses too. Well, those are the two dinosaurs I have discussed for this show. If you'd like this video, please give it a like and put it down in the comment section and subscribe to this channel. Next time on My Dinosaur Series, we will talk about a group of crocodilian-related carnivorous dinosaurs known as the Spinosauridae. This is Ian Fairley, and thank you for listening.